Hello. Good morning, good day, good afternoon. Are you able to hear me and see my screen? Hello. Hello, hello. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Okay, let's begin. Thank you for joining our Monday morning meeting, Live 360 Degrees Analysis and Q&A. Standard disclaimer, this is for educational purposes only, designed for sharing information on our trading system. Should be used only for should be used only by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. This session is different from the weekly market roundup video that we post. It is for live demonstration of the use of the Q systems and to look at stocks that you may have in mind. Today, I thought we will look at the global markets, different countries indices, Australia, India, China, and Hong Kong, see how they are doing. Today was the first day of the week. Then I will discuss how Q traders can use the memory support lines and decide when to wait to take a shot and when to take the shot immediately. With an example of this stock SIG, I discussed SIG in the market roundup based on the latest trend following short signal. I will explain why we would not take the previous magenta color candle for short. Then I will look at this stock COKE, again a stock that I mentioned in the market roundup and explain another technique. It's not of the one of the standard Q trade setups, but this is a popular technique as well. Buying a stock when it pulls back to support and then breaks out of squeeze with high volume. We can identify such trades also from Q systems. Then we'll try to find some stocks from top down and bottom up analysis. And we may see that there are not many immediately available low risk opportunities. And that happens when the market is near support in downtrend, but near support or in sideways range and near support as is true for the USA market. Let's start with the global indices. We'll start with Australia market. In the Australia market, after the bearish headwind in the weekly, price dropped heavily. For three weeks here, the weekly candle color was yellow. Previous week's candle was very indecisive. And this week, it is just Monday and the price has fallen sharply. It broke below the low of this watermark level. So far, the weekly candle is very bearish. In the daily price was in clear downtrend. The white direction line, yellow line, everything was declining. There were multiple memory resistance lines. After displaying the bullish headwind, price recovered a little bit as one could expect. Then it declined heavily again today. This is very bearish move of Monday today. Where is my annotate button?
that was Australia market. Let us have a look at the India market. In the India market, let me remove the relative performance because we are looking at market index. In this case, market futures, Nifty futures. In the weekly chart, it was going up. Previous two weeks, candle colors were cyan. Today, it opened with a big gap down move. I think it opened below previous week's low and then continued to go down further. We can see the gap down move more clearly in the daily chart. On Friday, price went up and today price op opened with a very big gap down move. The differential was pretty high and then it continued to go down, broke below this support, memory support as well. So India market also closed pretty bearish. What about China? That is the China index. Again, in the weekly after displaying the bearish headwind, it declined. There were several weeks of sideways move. Price had already declined a lot and then it was consolidating in a sideways range. There were multiple memory resistance lines in the weekly chart. We would not be thinking of taking any long in this index, we would not think that China market is ready to buy stocks unless these memory resistances were broken. That didn't happen. Today price opened with a gap down move that is clearer from the daily chart. It opened below the memory support and closed below the memory support as well. So China index is bearish as well. Let's look at Hong Kong. Hong Kong was in downtrend. There is a memory resistance line. Last week, it tried to go above that, but it reversed, created a false upside breakout in the weekly chart. Today, Monday, it opened with a gap down move again. The shape is bullish it has a long lower tail but because of the large gap down we have to say that today is bearish so we have seen four markets that have closed already on monday australia india china hong kong all of them are bearish we don't know whether usa market will go down or not but it is good to keep an eye on the global indices to have a broader perspective. We'll look at US futures later, probably near the close of today's session. Then we'll have some more information where the futures are moving. Let's now look at the stock SIG and understand why we would be taking the shot on certain magenta candles and not on some other magenta candles. And let me use trade station for that. Q Elite on trade station. This is SIG. In the daily chart, we had a magenta color candle on this day. Price was already in downtrend. It was even below the yellow and white direction lines. So this magenta color candle day gave us a trend following short setup, go with flow short setup. This came in the past week, this magenta color candle, and we see the weekly candle was already bearish for several weeks in color. So that met all the conditions for go with flow short setup. 
we would take the shot at the close of the day putting stop above recent high which would be also just above the memory resistance and then it fell because earnings was nearby we would be taking it more likely with short call vertical not with stocks what i wanted to also explain is we would be taking a shot on this magenta candle but not on this magenta candle firstly just before this magenta candle price went up there was no clear lower low if you considered this as a lower low and price went up and went down that may be a way of saying this was a lower low lower high day probably you don't do that because this was a sideways range that was one reason but another more important reason probably was that at that time price was just above the weekly memory support line so even if we had a magenta color candle and over longer period you can see it was in downtrend because price was just above the weekly support we would not take a shot on this day even if price fall below that drop sharply after that we would not think that was the right day to take shot whereas this day when price closed it actually closed below the weekly memory support that is why we would be taking shot on this day but not on this day that was sig let's now look at coke and explain this technique of buying a stock with pullback to support and breakout of squeeze with high volume this is coke this stock is fundamentally strong let's check it out with q vita coke.o yes so coke.o i entered the peer stock it retrieved detail about the stock retrieved the peers and calculated vital statistics coke the valuation is medium yellow color but it has earnings growth in q technique we look for a stock that is fundamentally strong technically strong and in strong industry for fundamental strength we look for either earnings acceleration or good valuation in this case valuation is medium yellow but it has accelerating earnings growth good earnings quality so we would be looking for a buy opportunity here this is in soft drinks industry let's look at the industry strength we can go to q edge and filter for soft drinks soft drinks industry is clearly strong so we have a stock coke it with accelerating earnings growth industry is strong we will look for a buying opportunity now let's see using q charts how we could take the long trade at the right edge as of last week we are not going to take the long trade because it is already extended to the upside it is above upper boundary line we have multiple bearish headwind signals though there is no headwind short setup because the weekly is bullish in shape and color both so we don't have any short trade setup however it is extended so we are not going to take long in fact if we had a long position then looking at the successive bearish headwinds we would apply trailing stop we don't need to exit position when this happens but we would apply trailing stop using q protection signal you can see the price went almost straight up didn't pull back here so it didn't give us any low risk entry opportunity during the up move 
when I open a chart, I tend to look from right to the left and try to see where we could take the last trade using Q systems. And I saw that opportunity would be on this day. At that time, price was high. So price, price was high. It broke out of a watermark level with high activity bullish shape candle. There was no go with flow trend following trade setup, but the setup could be a strong stock, fundamentally strong stock in a strong industry. You saw the industry was strong for quite a while. Then let the stock pull back to support. In this case, support meaning the two direction lines, yellow and white, and then break out with high activity. All of those were true on this candle. Usually we don't like breakout trades, except when the breakout allows us to take a low risk trade. So you could take a long position on this day, put stop just below recent low. Half profit could be booked along the way, partial profit, and then rest could be held with trailing stop. If we did that, we are still holding the stop at this partial position with trailing stop. Now, where is the squeeze here? The squeeze is seen from another template and let me change to that. We have a template for trading options. It also shows the squeeze. When a stock is in a squeeze, that means it is moving in less volatility, moving with less volatility. In this case, also moving in a narrow range. When the squeeze comes, then we have these red dots on the bands, upper band and lower band, and the squeeze goes away, then the green dot comes. So this was the day when there was a squeeze release. We can say it came out of squeeze, so it had a squeeze release, and we already saw it had high activity. Let me go back to the other template. So on this day, we had a squeeze release. We had high activity and price went up after pulling back to support. Fundamentally strong stock. If those all conditions are true, and in this case, the industry was also strong, then we can take a low risk stock and try to book partial profit quickly and hold on to remaining position, seeing that it goes up or not. Those are few items I wanted to discuss. Let us now look at the live systems and try to identify some trades. And I didn't find many lucrative trades. That happens when the market is in a sideways range and near the lower end of support and that we can see from SPY. It is in a sideways range with the highs at the same level, lows at the same level and now price is at the lower point and we are looking at the daily chart here. It is not easy or not advisable to take a shot at this point. There is a higher tendency that price will bounce up. Eventually, in a downtrend bearish market, it will break down, but we don't know when that will happen. Also, we are not sure it will lead to a bear market or not. So we don't know whether it is going to go down because so far it is in a sideways range. We have to assume the higher probability is for price to go up. That's why we are not going to take a short trade using daily chart. We are not going to take a long trade until we have a reversal trade setup. Such a setup may come either in the index, the ETF SPY or other stocks if the market goes up. But that hasn't happened yet. Friday was a very bearish day. Now, if market continues to go down from here, we are not able to use the daily chart to put our stop loss because the recent high is very far. If we put stop there, it, it will be risking too much money. 
and we may not arbitrarily put stop somewhere inside the Friday's candle. There is high chance such a stop will get whipsawed and then market may fall down again. So we don't have any logical place to put stop for a short trade now if we are using daily chart. If we see market is going down today or tomorrow this week and we want to take a short trade because we are not able to use the daily chart to put stop and if you want to take a short trade, then you may move to the fine tune intraday chart and decide your stop based on the pivot levels. Those tend to be very minuscule stop and you can make large profit if the stock moves in your direction, the ETF moves in your direction and if it moves against you, the stop is very narrow. That is the Q technique to take a short if you see price is going down from support. When price goes down from resistance, like if it recovered to the memory resistance and went down, then it is much easier to take the short using day trade because stop would be just above the memory resistance. Because price is near support and in downtrend, it is not easy to take a long or short either. And that we will see from individual stocks also. That's why I said it is not easy to find a high probability low risk trade under this market situation. Let's go to Q edge. Let's choose this category best performing value stocks. I have set the trading system to Q elite. So when I click charts, it will put the symbols in clipboard and I can paste them into radar. Let's look at them one by one. You can see all of these stocks went up by significant percentages on Friday and they happen to be value stocks. That's why it came in the list of strong performing value stocks. But you will see there is probably no buy opportunity here. Here we have, let's start with the top one. ANIP went up by 3.9% on Friday. In the daily chart, there is no clear trend. On Friday, it went up with high volume, but it is moving in a sideways range. Also in the weekly chart, it is inside a triangle pattern. That's why we don't have any trade setup. Let's look at the next stock BCE. Yellow line, white line, both are declining. We have lower highs, lower lows. So it is in a downtrend. If it is in a downtrend, we are allowed to take only reversal trade setups and we don't have any of the reversal trade setups. It could be headwind, box or bounce. None of those are applicable. So we don't have any trade setup here. CBL, again, the stock is in a clear downtrend. It went up on Friday, but it is in a downtrend and there is no reversal trade setup. DKS, Dick Sporting. In the weekly, it is reversing from resistance. That could give us a low risk short opportunity, but two successive weeks, we have very indecisive shape candles. And in the daily, it is inside a triangle pattern. So we don't have any short opportunity here. Neither do we have any long opportunity. It was one of the best performing value stocks, but it is in triangle pattern. So we are not going to look for buy here. Next stock, EGL. Here we have a situation where price is bouncing from memory support in weekly, but the weekly candle shape is indecisive. If it was bullish shape, then we could think of taking a long trade. Looking at the daily chart, it has a very indecisive shape candle in daily also on Friday. 
it tried to go up but ended with a very long lower tail we don't have any trade setup with this kind of candle we don't like to take any trade either long or short here we would be looking for long because it is value stock went up on friday but there is no trade setup extn the stock is in downtrend lower highs there are many memory resistances no memory support friday's candle color is red there is no trade set up with this kind of candle color and shape and pattern lpi it has a bullish headwind in the weekly chart weekly shape is indecisive this is in oil and gas industry if oil recovers this may give us a buying opportunity but there is no trade setup yet we may put it in checklist because there is a bullish headwind in weekly no harm putting it in checklist but we will not take a long trade until we see it has a proper setup PUMP also in oil and gas oil oil services and equipment industry it is at long term support watermark support in the weekly chart has a long lower tail in weekly though the shape overall is indecisive it has a long solid body also that is bearish the long lower tail is bullish so it has a mixed shape in weekly in daily it came to the watermark support here and reversed that is a positive sign it created a false downside breakout activity was high that was a positive sign however this day which was last thursday shape was very indecisive so we were not going to take any trade anyway price also closed below previous day's close then on friday price closed above thursday's close but ended with a bearish shape candle if on friday price ended with a bullish shape candle then we could apply the bounce long trade setup bounce long setup says if price is dropping sharply and suddenly hitting pre-existing support which could be either memory or deep watermark in this case it is a deep watermark the distance from peak to the watermark is quite large so it's a deep watermark level and then reverses with high activity all those are true then there is another requirement the signal day should have a bullish shape candle there is no requirement for color for bounce long trade setup but the shape requirement was not met that's why we couldn't take any long on friday you may keep an eye on this stock pump if it continues to go up and if oil is going up it will be probably safer to take the long only if oil is going up as well how is oil doing let's let's look at these two stocks and then look at oil futures the two remaining stocks are ezi not enough data when we have not enough data we are not going to apply technical analysis so we ignore rezi last one is saic this is the best performer among these stocks on friday went up by 6.9 percent and incidentally this looks the most promising there is no trade setup but we can see it came to a longer term watermark support it was creating a base for several weeks that is one two three four five six seven weeks almost two months you can say waiting for this earnings probably then last week had earnings it stopped out many weekends very sharp down move and sharp recovery at the same time false downside breakout we could think of taking a long trade if some conditions were true one the weekly shape had to be bullish at the end of friday which was not true the shape ended being mixed indecisive and in daily we had very nice false downside breakout we had a bull release signal candle color turned cyan however the shape is very mixed again we have to say it is mixed it's not bearish though it has a long 
upper tail, though it has a solid body, still we have to say it is mixed because on a closing basis, price closed significantly higher. We can see 6.9% higher. So it is a mixed day. If price closed above this memory resistance in daily with a bullish shape candle, that would also mean the weekly shape would have been bullish. And then we could consider taking a long as a breakout trade. That's not my favorite setup because breakout trades tend to give us big stop level, uh, wide stop level. So we would not be able to apply stop to recent low level, which would be very far from closing price if price closed above somewhere here at 70 point something. If price closed above memory resistance and if we took a long trade as a breakout trade, the low risk way is to put stop just below this gap up days low, somewhat below that not very close, but not so far as the recent low as well. However, we didn't have a trade setup. This is a hypothetical discussion. We didn't have a trade setup because the daily ended below the memory resistance, ended with a mixed shape candle and weekly also ended with a mixed shape candle. You may keep an eye on SAIC. It is a value stock because we picked it up from best performing value stocks. Let's have a look at its industry. SAIC, IT consulting and other services. We can click this magnifying glass, binocular. And we can see IT consulting and other services was strong earlier in this area, weekend and now strengthening. We looked at Friday's best performing value stock. So let me open up the latest two day and one day periods. And we can see it is maintaining the same cyanish color not very bright cyan but not as magenta as before what about the latest base columns there is no clear signal from there so it is maintaining its strength that it gained from month one to 10 days and from 10 days onwards it is maintaining the strength there is no trade setup yet if market goes up this may be a stock to keep in mind Let's look at oil. How is oil doing? We can look at oil futures. Futures are open. Not doing good, isn't it? In the weekly drop sharply, last week had a very mixed shape, indecisive shape, indecisive color candle. And this week, it is going down so far. Of course, overnight market doesn't reflect what will happen in the market hours, but so far it is going down. In the daily chart, it tried to go up last week after OPEC declared they will cut production, but fell down. In fact, we can see it closed below the memory resistance. And this week, this Monday today, the last part, you can see, let me clear the drawings. You can see initially it tried to go above the memory resistance and then went below that. That can be used to take a short trade. That is to use the resistance in the daily chart, which would be at this level, and then move to fine tune intraday chart. And let me do that. this was the level of the memory resistance. It moved sideways for a long time in the overnight market here. Friday's market close was here. This is the magenta pivot. So Friday's market close was here. Then in the overnight market, it moved in a sideways range for a long time. It broke out of that range on this candle. But that breakout would be very high risk entry opportunity. We would not take a shot at this point if we are trading futures because the stop would be far away. Instead, we could wait for a recovery and then have a magenta color candle. 
we could take a shot somewhere in this candle. Again, if we are trading based on intraday charts, if we get a signal when we have a long candle, in this case, long bearish candle, we have to be careful about the stop because stop will be far away. If we could catch the shot just as it was breaking below some kind of trend line, you could draw here. This point shot would be a low risk entry opportunity. At the close of this candle, now looking at it, we can see that it has given some profit from there. It fell further, but that is not the right way. I have seen when there is a long down candle, more often than not, price will stop us out, meaning price will recover to the low of that candle, go somewhat above that, stopping out all the weak hands and resume downtrend when there is nobody available to buy back the weak hands. No, no weak hand is available to buy the stock. If it is a small candle that is giving us a short opportunity, that would be a low risk entry opportunity. Now it is again moving in a range bound fashion. So we are not going to think of taking any short here, not at this price point. What we would like to do is if price comes back to the upper end of the range, and we can see there are multiple resistance lines also, memories and dips from there. That would be the right time to take the shot because the stop would be very narrow and here we are using the bearishness of the daily chart to enter the trade in intraday chart. Just like we use the bearishness in weekly chart to decide a trade in daily chart. If I go back to the hop on template, we can see the oil is not recovering. So the response to the OPEC cut so far is not bullish, not confirmed bullish. It is moving sideways, not falling much also yet. It has to go below this watermark support for us to be thinking of taking shots again. Until that support is break broken, it is not time to take any shot in oil or probably in energy stocks because those stocks and oil itself is oversold now. It has dropped a lot. Let's go back to QH. We couldn't find any trade opportunity from the best performing value stocks. Let's look at the worst performing growth stocks. Market seems bearish, but it is at the support of a sideways range. We cannot say it is fully bearish also because it is at support. But if it goes down, the growth stocks will go down fast. Growth stocks tend to go up fast and go down fast. Let's see if we have a low risk entry opportunity, likely opportunity in any of them. Look at them through trade station again using Q Elite. Click here, paste the symbols. We can see all of them dropped significantly. CGNX, this broke below memory support in the daily chart. But as often happens, when the breakout comes, the stop is far away. That's why we are not going to take a short trade using the weekly daily charts. It is bearish. If we are having long position, we have to be very cautious because now it has broken below the triangle pattern, below the support and activity is also high in last few days. EXTR. Weekly is bearish shape, bearish color. Daily gave us a short trade opportunity on this day, three days ago. That could be taken as a short trade, putting stop just above this memory resistance, trying to book profit at the lower boundary level. 
every day that passes after the signal day, we have less reward and more risk. So that is not the way we trade in Q technique. We want to take the trade on the signal day at the close of that day, preferably, or maybe next day using fine tune chart near open. So we are not going to take the trade today because now the stop will be further away and the reward will be closer. Reward risk ratio will not be attractive. The last opportunity was here three days ago. Five, five is bearish again in the weekly chart, but daily is very close to memory support inside the triangle pattern. When the market ETFs, most of them are inside triangle patterns, then you will see many stocks are also inside triangle patterns or in a sideways range. That is how Q system will tell us not to take a trade. Most of the stocks, when they are not giving a low risk entry, will not will not agree with our trade setup rules. So five is one of them, not giving us any trade setup. H, Q, Y. This is a very bearish chart. We distinguish between the statements that the chart is bearish and whether there is a trade setup. It is very bearish because it broke below memory support with very high activity on Thursday, Friday. Thursday's drop was related to earnings. Weekly has a very large engulfing candle, bearish engulfing candle, very large. But now the stop will be far away. A safer technique will be to wait to see if price could recover somewhat, preferably to the memory support and decline. If it cannot go all the way up to the memory support, if it goes up somewhat and declines, you may consider taking a shot. However, note that by that time, it will be below the boundary level, lower boundary level. So that is not the usual place for us to take shot. Price would have been oversold. But if you were very bearish on this stock, you may consider taking a shot. If it recovers to the memory support, which would turn into resistance then and falls down from there. To be able to consider such a short trade, we have to see if the industry is weak. This is one of the growth stocks. So we have to see whether it is overvalued and also look at the industry. Let's look at that using QH, HQY, HQY, was it HQY? Yes, HQY, regional banks. why it is not updating properly. Okay, I have to check HQY. Okay, interesting. You know, trade station has a very different way of deciding a stocks industry. HQY, if I go to Thomson Reuters, HQY dot O, it is in managed healthcare, advanced medical industry in healthcare sector. We rely much more on Thomson Reuters data than on trade station data. So we have to ignore this classification. In fact, I contacted trade station and they said the data comes from a third party. They didn't mention that third party's name, but they said it comes from third party, not only these classifications, but also these earnings numbers. And they are not always in sync with what you see from Thomson Reuters. So though we have those data printed on the Q Elite charts, you may be not using them. Instead, you use the data from Q Edge, Q Vital, or from Thomson Reuters, Metastock Zenith. So we will decide that HQY is not in financial sector, it's in healthcare sector. This is the most reliable data, Thomson Reuters. Let's look at the industry. It is weak, so that is good for us. It allows us to 
short the stock. What about the stock's fundamentals? HQY is overvalued. It was having high growth. That's why it came in the list of high growth stocks falling down, but it is overvalued. So it meets all the requirements, 360 degrees requirements to take a short trade. These are the kinds of stocks we like to short. Industry is weak. The stock is overvalued. And now technically it has broken below support. We would not be shorting it now. Now if you look back, you can see very clearly this day was the short signal day. With go with flow, short trade setup. Price was in a downtrend with lower high, lower, low, it recovered. That is our preferred timing for shorting. It should recover till down, till down enough to give us a magenta color candle. We could short at this point, stop just above recent high. Target would be lower boundary, so it had acceptable reward risk ratio. We can see earnings was nearby. So in this case, we would probably take the shot only if options are available and using short call verticals, not with stock. That is not the Q suggestion, not to use stocks just before earnings, unless we are buying for long-term investing. This is not the stock to buy for long-term investing and shorting for long-term may not be the approach that is suitable for everybody. We had a very appropriate short setup three days ago and that gave very high profit. Now there is no trade setup. If it recovers somewhat, goes down, the industry weakness, fundamental weakness, and then technical weakness will allow us to short. Next stock, MKSI. Very bearish stock again. Very stock, but we don't have any trade setup. And looking back, this magenta color, in case of MKSI, this didn't give us a trade setup because we didn't have lower high, lower low. We had a higher high. So we would not be thinking of taking a shot in this candle. Now it is already down near support. Though it is bearish, we are not going to take it short, take any short trade. MU Micron inside a triangle pattern. Therefore, we are not going to short it. Netflix inside a triangle pattern. We are not going to short it. We may consider shorting it if it clears the memory support. However, by that time, it will come near the lower boundary. A better technique would be to wait for it to break below support, recover somewhat, hopefully to the memory support that is around 260 and till down. Being patient in that way helps a lot with taking high probability trades, not be in a hurry and get whips on. NVIDIA, again a bearish stock, however, already near lower boundary. Though we have a magenta color candle, stop would be far away. Target is lower boundary. We are at lower boundary. We are not going to take any shot. SKYW, Sky West. Already at lower boundary. Where was the last setup in the daily chart on this candle? Because we had lower high and lower low, then price recovered, tilted enough to give us a magenta candle. That was the signal for go with flow short setup, entry at this price point, stop just above recent high, target would be lower boundary, that was hit on Friday. If we are using this analysis every day, then we could identify the trade easily. It had a magenta color candle, so it would have come in our sonar, bottom up analysis when we run the go with flow short sonar or we could find it from trade station radar. Also, you can see on this day, it had a big price move, down move. 
therefore we can anticipate that it also came in this list was performing growth stocks on that day so we could find it from different ways we could find it from was performing growth stocks list from qh the inside or we could find from sonar and we could take a profitable trade last trade in this category was performing growth stocks of friday ulta or alta again a bearish stock again looking back the short signal day was on this candle because by that time price already had lower high and lower low recovered somewhat gave us a cyan color candle not cyan magenta color candle that was the signal for a short trade go through short setup we can see earnings was nearby so preferred approach for q traders is to trade it with short call vertical that would be very profitable to take this trade we have to see if the fundamentals and industry rotation allowed that let's look at that ulta ulta or alta in specialty stores industry instantly we know the industry was weak so we could short it from the industry perspective it allowed us to short and if we look at fundamentals instantly we see the valuation is magenta it is overvalued that allows us to short as well so we found two stocks ulta and another stock we saw earlier where we had a very lucrative short opportunity in the previous week not now because price has already dropped we went through two different inside categories and we couldn't find any low risk trade right now there were several very easily identifiable and profitable trades last week right now there is none if you have any stock i will be happy to look at that let's look at gold mining the best performing industries if we look at refresh the data sort it and scroll up i have to scroll up gold is the best performing industry of the week pace is somewhat cyan but it is clearly strong very strong the best performer let's drill down and there are not many value stocks none of them are value stocks actually both of their valuation is in magenta color rgld also has negative earnings growth let's try to find other gold mining stocks using q vital let's do a peer analysis on rgld and the moment we enter the root stock it carries out carries out three passes first finds the stock detail then the peer stocks and then calculates the fundamental statistics that has done and you can see none of them are of good value in the usa market what about earnings growth none of them are having good earnings growth so though gold miners went up if we apply 360 degrees principle where we want to buy only if industry is strong fundamentally strong in some way and technicals are strong then we don't find any trade opportunity whereas if you look at other countries like australia for example you will find good value gold mining stocks now so if you have an account in a brokerage that allows investing in australia and if you are looking into gold miners you may find a better opportunity there having said that no harm looking at some of them because there are some traders who ignore the fundamental sometimes sometimes especially when the market is very weak and they think gold may go up i'm trying to get rid of the stocks with dot pk because those may be very low price stocks and one way of doing that it is to check the minimum closing price filter i set it to 
and it is retrieving the peers again. It got less number of peers and did the fundamental analysis. These are the stocks. We can open it with okay here you can see i have set the technical trading system to q global and it is telling me close the chart first i close the chart and let me highlight all of them open all of them at the same time using the at a glance template let's go through them g o r o has a bullish headwind in the daily chart, but Friday's candle shape is indecisive, has an upper tail, weekly is also indecisive. So as of today, there is no trade setup as of Friday's close. Next stock. Next stock is MUX. Daily has bullish shape, bullish color, nicely going up after displaying the bullish headwind, has memory support, there is no memory resistance. However, weekly is indecisive. So if we apply our trade setup, there is no trade setup. If the weekly was cyan, we could consider applying the go with flow long trade setup. In a way, you can say it is going up, if we have a cyan color candle in daily and weekly had to be cyan, which is not. If weekly was cyan, we could consider applying the trend following long trade setup, but we don't have that. This one looks better instantly, isn't it? OR. OR created a long base in weekly, broke out of a very long term memory resistance, relative performance is going up, ended the previous week with very bullish shape, bullish color candle. In the daily we have lower, in the daily we have higher high, in the daily we have higher low here, higher high here, and it broke out of many memory resistance lines, also closed above the yellow direction line. This is a breakout setup. You can see breakout setups are not optimal because the stop is now three days away. Still, if you are bullish on gold and you are okay with taking a breakout setup, among all the stocks we looked so far, gold mining stocks, OR looks most appealing, isn't it? And we could come to that conclusion instantly. By the way, the bullish headwind here also could catch near the bottom. There was no bullish headwind trade setup probably, but now it has a possible breakout trade setup, OR. RGLD, also bullish in weekly. However, in the daily, it has already gone up from the recent low. So we don't have any low risk entry opportunity. It is close to the upper boundary line. If it pulls down, little bit and goes up, that would give us a trend following long trade setup on technical charts. Newmont NEM, the weekly candle color is bullish. Daily has a sand color candle. It is in an uptrend. We have higher lows, higher highs. It could give us a trend following long trade setup on Friday if the upper tail was not there. In this case, there was an upper tail. Under such a situation, if we wanted to take a long, the long would not be taken at Friday's close. Today, if we want to take a long, we can do that using fine tune chart. We can open the fine tune chart for new month. And if it is going above early range high and the early range is narrow enough, then we can consider taking a long trade using fine tune chart because it allows us to take the go with flow trade setup, but we wouldn't enter on Friday because there was an upper tail. That is our suggested entry technique to take it next day using early range breakout technique. If we have an upper tail when the go with flow long setup has come. Was there any other gold miner? 
one more rgld maybe we saw this already okay no so or is the only gold miner that look interesting let us look at or using trade station same pattern attractive breakout why i came here is to look at the option volatility and see options are available options are available and i discussed about squeeze release you can see it was in a squeeze before by the way this squeeze calculation is not what you see in some other platforms related to keltner challenge bollinger band etc this is a different calculation it looks at the actual band squeezing not only the visible band there are multiple other calculations band calculations that are invisible here if all of them are squeezing the squeeze becomes red when it starts to expand first it becomes yellow then it becomes green sometimes it flips from red to green so it is starting to come out of squeeze it will become green when both the sides start to expand now probably only one side is starting to expand it is giving the beginning of a squeeze release and we saw on the hop on chart template that it is a very nice breakout so there are different reasons different reasons for considering a long trade okay let's look at the futures now market futures e mini e mini last week e mini s&p 500 last week had a very sharp reversal week opened with a large gap up based on the optimism of trade truce between usa and china during that time during the weekend the two presidents of china and the america had meeting price gapped up but throughout the week it fell price closed near memory support that's why it was not the time to take short also and now we can see overnight market the last candle here in the daily chart we have a hollow candle so far and we have upper tail lower tail of course the candle is not complete at all market hasn't opened yet regular market hours so far there is no clear indication whether we will have a we'll have a bullish day or bearish day we never have a clear indication but so far the candle is indecisive anyway that was s p 500 let's look at nasdaq Futures at NQ. Last week had a reversal day, not engulfing reversal week, not engulfing week, but reversal week. You can see this day's overnight market candle is indecisive. We have no signal from there. That was same for S and P five hundred about. Dow Jones futures, YM, same pattern in the daily. Today's candle is indecisive so far, and the last one is Russell 2000. Today's candle is indecisive. If the market goes down, then it may be easiest to short Russell 2000. This is the one that broke below memory support. None of the other futures or their ETFs could break below memory support. Here it has broken below memory support in weekly, daily, both. So it may be easier to short Russell 2000. That means small cap stocks if market continues to go down. We have to see if it is going down because it is near or below support. Using daily chart, it will be difficult to put a stop loss that will be far away. You may use intraday chart. To apply stop loss for short trade for long trade if we have a long signal on daily chart then it will be easier to put the stop just below support we try to keep this session to one hour 
so that people have time to get ready for the market open. That is all we have for today. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next week. Have a great, have a great week and trade profitably. Thank you very much for joining.